Hi, it's Elaine. Welcome back to my channel. Now, today we are going to cover the essentials that makeup artists and, if you like, freelancers. I do makeup freelance and I also do beauty treatments and massage freelance. So it's what we, if you want to call us professionals in the sense that we're qualified in the industry, it's what the pros carry in their bags. Now, this isn't your kit bag. This is whether it be a handbag, a rucksack, whatever it is that you carry. These are my most popular items that myself and many others carry in our bags for when we're out and about, when we're working with clients or named, maybe it's a celebrity client that you're working with or a, a famous face. It's what we carry in case we're expected to be a Mary Poppins type character on set or when you're with a client, they just expect you to have some key items. So this is just a wee chat about what the pros carry in our bags. So I'm also going to mention some of the answers that one of my friends in the industry gave me. And that is Sarah Harron, who has an amazing handbag brand. Sarah's got a great backstory. And if you go onto her website, it's Sarah Harron. You can read all about it. She's done quite a lot of podcasts and interviews over the years. And I wanted to get some answers from her about what she carries in her bag. And the reason for this is Sarah has made the perfect bag her goal and her mission in life. And you can read all about her backstory, but long story short, Sarah was working in high level IT, very successful within her field, but she found that when she was going from office to event or traveling internationally, she just couldn't find a bag that took her from daytime to evening. So she would have to have a bag for day, a different bag for night, maybe a bag for this type of event, a smaller bag for that type of event. And what she realised was there was a gap in the market for people that need a bag that does it all but looks amazing. So she has created the Sarah Harron collection. She's always adding and developing and she's always creating new products. But these bags are interchangeable. They work on so many different levels. And I would love for you to take a look and see what she did, even purely for the fact that Sarah is so inspiring that she put her money where her mouth was. She saw a gap. She was actually the person that was looking for the bag. It didn't exist. So she created it herself. So take a look if you get a chance. But throughout this, I'll also mention some of Sarah's answers when I quizzed her on what she carries in her bag. So firstly, for myself, what you tend to find is water is so important to carry in your bag because sometimes when you're working with clients they might not actually have water with them sometimes when you're on location there might be water but it might not be easily accessible if you're actually filming or if you're out and about and you're not in a studio setting they can't always have water on tap but having a bottle of water can be great obviously for hydration but sometimes when you're using certain products, you actually need water to help to activate them, to help to quickly remove them, just to get a quick result. So I would say without even going into the fact that you do need hydration, water is a very, very handy thing to have in a pro bag. Also handy to have in a pro bag is some sort of snack or energy related snack that will just see you through. If, again, you're working with clients and it's going on longer than you thought, maybe you're doing a batch of clients all in one go and you can't stop to eat. Um, I've done pamper parties where you might be working six or seven hours straight and you don't take breaks. So what you'll do is just grab your energy in between, have some water. And I would say the best energy, which will be no surprise to anyone that is into their, into their nutrition, is something that is slow release. So it could be nuts and seeds, it could be energy bars, it could be protein bars, sometimes it's just fruit. Remember, it's a cliche because it's true. The fruit already has its own packaging, so you don't need to worry about how you store the fruit because you're okay just to pop it in your bag and it's there and it's ready to go. So even something like an apple or a banana. Energy balls are really handy. Um, there's so many different opportunities now to just grab something that's slow release and it'll keep you going. But what you don't want is what might look tempting, which is the chocolate bars or the high sugar items. Because what will happen is you won't 
slowly sustain that energy and you might get an energy boost but that will be followed by an energy crash and we've got to keep our focus whether it be providing treatments or doing makeup artistry or just being on call for people we can't afford to get energy slumps so definitely the water and the slow release energy and you can pick from which area that you choose. Okay, some obvious ones for us, it might not always be obvious for you, is some sort of moisturiser. Ideally, either what works for you, if it's just for you, or something that maybe covers all bases, maybe a fragrance-free gel moisturiser or something that's non-specific, just in case, again, there's a reason why somebody either needs to use moisturiser, borrow it from you, or you've got to use it on a client and you are not doing anything that particularly relates to that, so you don't have a facial kit with you. Again, maybe you're doing makeup artistry and you're on location and someone is asking for something to quickly moisturise. It could be face, it could be hands, it could even be that when you're filming a hand or a near an elbow showing up dry, you've got to get some moisture into that quickly. I really like a Ven for that because it's effective moisturisers, they're fragrance free, they are not oily and shiny on the skin so they do the job but they sink in quickly. And again, even though it might be a facial moisturiser in a situation where you need to moisturise the hands quickly, it can be used multi-purpose so that can come in very handy too. Now also some sort of lip product, it could be a lip salve, it could be petroleum jelly, it could be glosses or it could again be something that doesn't look too shiny on the lips because it could be someone that doesn't want or need to have the lips looking like they've got a product on them it could just be purely to get the moisture in it could also be again just a unisex product for anyone so it's not necessarily a product to make the lips look good it could be just a performance product where you need to get some moisture into those lips but also for yourself in your pro bag If you're just wanting to be able to quickly hydrate your lips, again, could be in a very dry environment, a very hot environment. So it could be handy to make sure it's got the SPF in it too. That could go for your moisturiser just to make sure it's got an SPF. Now, this is one that I am always surprised that people don't carry with them and it's tissues. So even in the supermarkets, you can get the multi-pack of about 20 little you know the tissues in the little pouches like the takeaway tissues and you can buy them individually but they're really economical if you buy the packs the carry about packs in like a pack of 12 or 20 and tissues are extremely handy because you'd be surprised how many people don't carry them it's as simple as maybe needing to just blow your nose or maybe someone has got a little bit of perspiration and you need to dab it down. Maybe you again need to mop something up on a set or you're working with clients and there's a spillage. I am always so surprised people that don't just carry a little pouch of tissues. So if you don't, just get yourself the little takeaway pack and have them to hand. I wouldn't be without them because I am normally the go-to person. But they're so handy multi-purpose you can't it's probably never ending what you would unexpectedly need a tissue for so just always carry them to hand when you're working with clients in many different environments honestly for so many reasons whether it's to quickly take a product off to absorb product you name it tissues are so handy hair ties now here's one it's another one that i'm so frequently asked for If you're working with a client and they have longer hair and you're working, say, it's maybe a back massage or a facial, long hair can get in the way. So if someone doesn't have a hair tie to hand, just have a set of them. And again, you don't need to spend too much on them and you can just give them to clients as you go. You don't need to ask for them back. It's also handy for you, again, if you're working on a location where you may be asked to tie your hair back or it might be very windy and you're outdoors. So just have them to hand and alongside that, just maybe a small mini travel hairspray. That's another one that quite often, obviously not so much with beauty clients because they're there to have a treatment, but makeup clients, when you're booked to do any particular makeup jobs, you might not be doing the hair, but quite often 
there might be a, a need to very quickly spray the hair. So just have a little travel hairspray to hand and you'll be so glad that you did. So I asked Sarah if there was anything that she considered an essential for her bag. Now she said that she's quite, quite normal in what's in her bag. It wouldn't be anything that would surprise you or anything you'd consider strange. Definitely coming from the IT background and being a mother too, she's very practical. But she did say that in addition to your usual tech that everybody carries about nowadays and the basics of makeup and the water, Sarah always carries a nail file. And the reason is, again, that she was saying that it's just so handy that if something snags your nail or even though you might not be a particularly nail centric person, just having a nail file there when you get a snag or you catch your nail is extremely handy. And I think that's a great addition to your bag because there's so many people now and, and I read it too and you never know where the fact actually lies. But you're scared to carry your travel scissors now because you don't know in certain scenarios if you're allowed scissors, if you're doing a lot of plane travel. Sometimes you're told that you can't carry scissors because they're considered a dangerous item in your bag. So a lot of us that maybe previously 10, 20 years ago would have carried the little nail set that had the clippers. If I'm being honest, you never used them, but you had the clippers and the tiny little nail nail scissors and the little nail file which we all know the metal ones are not ideal but we carried them anyway but now you don't really carry those things so I think that's a great one just having a nail file there if you get a little edge or a little snag it can be very irritating but it can also get in the way also from a therapist and makeup artist point of view if you are in a situation where you are told that your nails are too long or you know yourself that your nails are too long, then having the nail file there means that if you get to the job quickly or you get there in plenty of time and you know you've got a bit of time to get those nails filed, you can have them filed down and be completely prepped and ready for that client. And if you weren't aware of it, the examples could be doing a facial or a massage on someone Technically, you shouldn't be able to see the free edge over the pads of your fingers when you look at your nails because you don't want to scratch someone. That's not going to be comfortable for anyone. But in addition to that, think about yourself as the therapist. Do you really want to have product collecting under long nails? Do you want to collect all the dead skin cells from your client under your long nails? No, not for me, thanks very much. So not only is it for health and safety, but it's also for hygiene too. So Sarah, I think that's a great point to carry a nail file. Another item or set of items I think are very handy in your pro bag. Now again, this is your pro handbag, your pro rucksack, whatever it is, is lenses solution. So contact lens solution, a spare contact lens case and your glasses or spare glasses because there are situations that can occur where if your sight is irritated and you need any of these, it can affect your work, it can affect the working day and it can cause you discomfort. So if you don't wear glasses or lenses, then obviously you don't need this. But what I would say is in that case, maybe have just an eye sensitivity solution, like an Optrex style solution in your kit. But I'll be covering kits in a different chat. But maybe just have an all-purpose contact lens solution, maybe just in your pro kit, because it's really handy if someone gets caught short or they have an issue with their lenses and they're actually on a set. You will be the saviour of the day if you can actually just get the lens solution to them and solve the problem. But again, that's for another chat. For us contact lens wearers, a few reasons why I think this is good to have in your bag. If you've got a very long day and you don't know exactly when it's coming to an end, it could be extended. And sometimes your contact lenses do not want to play. So they can get very tired. Your eyes can get tired. Lenses can get gritty, cloudy, irritating. I've even been in hot climates where the humidity in the air has dried out my contact lens and I have blinked and the contact lens has actually just come out my eye into my hand. So in that situation, you're down a lens, you can't see properly, but you're still working. So what do you do in that situation? You get those lenses out, you get them into the lens container, give them a clean, ideally then, if not later, get your spare glasses on. There's so many different reasons why you could have an irritation in your eye. Sometimes random things just happen. So if you've got those with you, it's not going to cause you issues during the day. 
It also means that if you've got to drive for any reason, you've got your spare glasses, you can still drive, you're good to go. But the amount of times that I've either had it happen to me or someone I've been working alongside, a lens situation has occurred. Have the solution, have the case, have the glasses. You will be so glad you did. Another handy item to have in your pro bag is sunglasses. Now, prescription if necessary, but again, the sunglasses might not necessarily be for you, but they can be extremely handy if you are moving from location to location. If you're working in different areas and you didn't anticipate how bright it was going to be, silly things like headaches can occur that you just didn't think about. So just having the sunglasses on hand and knowing that if you're in an area that you didn't anticipate needing the sunglasses, you've got them to hand. But again, they can be very handy if someone that you're working with requires sunglasses. And that's happened to me before. Uh, It's a bit of a funny one because I was working on a film set and the head makeup artist in this one, I was one of the makeup assistants. Head makeup artist needed her sunglasses, but we were on location. So we couldn't get her sunglasses because it would involve a drive. So in that situation, I had sunglasses in my bag. But the problem was sunglasses had moved on in style. My sunglasses in my bag were quite a few years old and out come the very blingy Jenny from the block sunglasses that definitely did the trick, but they did look like they belonged in a JLo music video from the early 2000s. So they were a bit of a figure of fun. They were a good laugh, but hey, they did the trick. I had my sunglasses. She needed the sunglasses. Our boss got the sunglasses. So the only thing in that situation is maybe just check every so often that your sunglasses are up to date and quite current. (laughs) But end of the day, they did what we needed them to do. Another handy thing to have in your bag, and again, we're talking about your handbag, but it's crossing over for work, is just some of the basics, the painkillers, the the emergency, what should we call them? Um, I suppose the real name, which I have again had to give to people in the past for emergencies, is, um, well, the brand name here is Imodium, but we used to call it the emergency cork because if someone's got an upset tummy, they just need something to stop that issue immediately. So I would always carry paracetamol, Imodium and sometimes aspirin, but again, it wasn't as if I was carrying an entire pharmacy with me. It's just that you can be in situations where you might develop a headache and there is absolutely nowhere you can go to deal with that. Sometimes again in our industry, whether it be makeup, whether it be performing massage therapies and beauty treatments, it could be long days, it could be your posture that does it, it could just be that you know that you've not drank, you've not eaten enough and it could be dehydration. Sometimes you might actually develop a little pulled muscle because you have been working so long, you've actually gave yourself a little bit of an injury. So having those painkillers to hand and also having something like the Imodium to hand, you can sometimes be the favourite person of your friend if they say, I'm feeling really ill. Is there any chance I could have a paracetamol or do you know somewhere where you can get one? But you've got to be so careful with that. Now, it used to be that if someone did have a headache, they would just ask around and say, can anyone um, give me a painkiller, a tablet? But nowadays with allergies and with all the different reasons why you can't take things or someone might react to something, I would say now keep them just for you and maybe don't broadcast the fact that you've got them because on a pro set, if it's makeup and if it's a big set, there'll be a nurse there anyway, there'll be a first aider, they can deal with it. And even when I was teaching in colleges, we weren't allowed to give anything like a paracetamol. We couldn't give one to a student, even if we saw that they were extremely uncomfortable. They had to go to the medical bay. And the reasons are now that it's just such a litigious area. So I would say keep them for yourself and don't advertise it. But when something does occur and you're in a pro situation, just knowing that you've got those tablets there could make all the difference. Now, the last one for me, which is an obvious one, is if I know that I'm going to be doing a makeup job, it could be weddings, it could be again on a pro set, there isn't always someone there that's a stylist or somebody that's dressing them. And especially if it's weddings, sometimes people haven't thought about what happens to the clothing that they're going to put on once they've got their makeup on. So having something like a nice fine scarf, a couple of reasons for a scarf. It protects your clothing from makeup 
but if it's a nice fine scarf it doesn't do anything to the makeup and it also means that if there was any product going to go on to something it would be the scarf and not the clothing that you're about to put on. Obviously you don't want to get any makeup on a wedding dress but likewise if someone's getting changed and they're moving on to a black or a dark outfit for the complete opposite reasons powders and all sorts could show up, foundation could show up very easily on a dark fabric. So just having a scarf in your bag is very handy in case it's a scenario where there isn't a stylist, there isn't wardrobe or it's a wedding party or a special event and they haven't thought about the fact that they have to put a dress or a top over their head. So you can save the day and all you do is you pop the scarf over the head, slide the clothing on and then the scarf can just come away easy, solved every problem. The thing about the scarf is obviously it's your bag, you want to have a nice scarf but you want to make sure that it's machine washable so that if you do get any product on it, it's easy to clean. But the other thing that's handy about the scarf is, again, pro scenarios. Depending on the style of scarf, you can use it to alter an outfit. So if you're going from one job to another to another, you might choose to incorporate the scarf to break up the outfits or you might be going from quite a casual scenario to maybe a more prestigious event but you might not have time to do a full change you've got your scarf but also if you get cold on a set depending on the style of scarf sometimes just being able to wrap it around your neck cover your shoulders so many different things I also love it when I've got friends in the industry and they'll take a scarf and they'll put it in their hair and I don't know how they do it but they just do five seconds of shushing about they've made that scarf look absolutely fantastic in their hair so a scarf is really handy in our industry just to carry in your bag and it can be very simple, very ornate. I would say again just be careful what style of scarf and which fabric you use in case you are using it to protect clothing from makeup because what you don't want to do is be irritated because your scarf's got stains on it. And the final word again from Sarah, I asked her what beauty products she would always carry in her bag and why. And I like this. This is how stylish Sarah is. She would always carry her Chanel lipstick and Lancome blusher because both of these products are easy to use and they can stick so easily in her Dahlia handbag. And if you haven't seen the Dahlia, go on the website because those bags are stunning. And Sarah loves the lipstick as it's an easy way to look smart and confident and all it takes is just a tiny flick of colour. So again, depending on whether you would like to wear a lot of makeup or not, I agree. For anyone out there that likes their lipstick, it's a brilliant thing. It's a small thing to carry in your bag that can be used for your lips. It can be used as blusher. It can even be used for eyeshadow just by blending it with the heat of your fingers. So that can also be a multi-purpose product and it's so compact to carry in your bag. So hope you found that interesting. So again, that's just a typical handbag for me. If I was working with clients, I would try to cover Maybe not all of those, but definitely some core items within that. If I knew what the brief was or if I knew if it was beauty treatments, massage treatments, makeup, if I'm on set, if I'm working privately. So I hope you did find it interesting. I will always be happy to read your comments, your suggestions for future podcasts. And as always, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and I'll see you again soon.